Hi everyone, welcome to Rose Hippie Knits podcast episode 42. My name is Hannah and you can find me as Rose Hip Chick on Ravelry and on Instagram and I normally post uh, show notes under, um, on our blog uh, which you can find um, by going to rosehipknitspodcast.blogspot.com However, I did not um, post anything for the last episode. I'll do that. What I have been thinking is that maybe I should do show notes um, in Ravelry. We have a group on Ravelry and you can find that just by searching for Rose Hip Knits Podcast uh, in the groups. And um, yes, I, was, I normally put a thread in the Ravelry group for each episode that I put on YouTube. So I thought maybe I should just put some show notes in that thread and on the blog just um, link to the Ravelry thread. If you have any suggestion or any ideas or what, just um, any thoughts about that, please let me know. I don't know how many people actually use the show notes, so I don't know how much time and effort I should put, put into them. But I really like when uh, podcasters put the show notes in Ravelry, so I thought maybe I should do that too. Um, welcome everyone. We are having a wonderful, beautiful, sunny day today here in northern Tasmania where I am. If you haven't watched before, um, I am a Swedish transplant, I think um, we're sometimes called. I'm this um, Swedish person who ended up in Australia. I moved here when I was about 24, 25 so a while ago now and uh, I live here in northern Tasmania with my husband and our two little girls a six-year-old and a two and a half year old um, and I do lots of knitting and crafting since having children I have mostly been doing knitting because it's just easy and um, mobile and you can do a few rows a few stitches even here and there and that suits really well with them um, how life is going at the moment. Um, I don't have a lot of time today, like always, um, but I do enjoy sitting down and talking to you so much and sharing what I have been working on and I really like to do that and I make it priority. So I found my time today to sit down and do that, but I do not have a whole lot of time. So I'm just going to try to do this in one go and um, what we can fit in, we can fit in. <clears throat> Thank you to all of you for watching and for taking the time to be here with me. Today, it's all about knitting. Um, I have not really been doing anything else, been quite busy. I have started my new job and um, it's taking quite a lot of, of my mental space and time. Um, so knitting has been just a nice relaxing thing that I have been doing. I have not really had any time to be out in the studio here while I do my sewing. I sell project bags and hand dyed yarn on Etsy in the shop called Rosic Island. Um, so yes, I have not really had time to be out here. I was away with work from meeting for three days and um, no, knitting has been what I've been doing. So knitting is what we will talk about. It is really quite hot here today, so um, I hope uh, I don't look like I'm melting. All about knitting, I said, yes. So, um, since I podcasted last time, one of the secret test, knittings, test knitting items that I worked on a while ago, um, the, pub, the pattern for that was published, and it was a knit um, by Tin Can Knits and I always enjoy test knitting for them and I really enjoy the patterns and I was really lucky that I got to test knit um, a pattern for them again for the latest collection and that collection is called Mad Colour and um, you can easily find it on Ravelry um, and this is what I test knit this is the Bumble Sweater and I did a size 2 to 4 year old so on my Two and a half year old it is quite large and that's perfect because it will be really good for next cold season when she's three and a bit 
Mostly when I do test knits, I try to find um, the materials for it in my stash. I don't really want to buy new yarn to do test knits. Um, I just use test knits as a good way to use up my, my deep stash. So for this one, uh, what fitted with the pattern was some old Yo Sharp Aran Tweed, I think it's called. Silk Road Aran Tweed. It's this really tealy, bright colour. I think it's called Imagine the colourway. I'm not sure. It's all in my Ravelry project page. So I used that as the one colour. And then for the um, second colour, I used one of my hand dyed. Um, it's a 10 ply Australian Merino. And I had two 100 gram skeins of this. And... Um, I dyed it up when I was going to sell some hand dyed at a market in Sweden and that was one and a half years ago I think and it didn't sell and I left it with my mum and then when I went back in May this year I took it back with me again because I thought I can use that um, so as the colour it has um, Purples, blues, greens, and greys. And I have not really dyed on the ten ply, or it's sort of a worsted Aran weight. Have not dyed that again for my shop now. Um, I am thinking about it, but I'll probably do it. If I do it, I'll do it when we're back in a cold season, not now when summer is around the corner. Anyway, I thought these colours just went really well together it was just fun a fun combination and I must say that this pattern was so enjoyable to knit it was so much fun it's a slip stitch pattern as you can see and uh, yes it just um, flew off the needles really and I really like this um, detail here with these slip stitches and I used um, my contrasting colour the cuffs. So that was one of the things I've been working on that I was not able to show you and uh, it was a while ago so I can't quite remember all the details but yes go to my Ravelry project page and have a look if you're interested in needle size and things like that and it is really hard to catch on camera that my hand dyed really every stitch in here is a different color and uh, yes it's just it looks like so much fun it's yes i really recommend this pattern i have enough leftovers that i can do the um, the bumble hat that tin can it's did previously and uh, it's same slip stitch um texture pattern for that and that will go really well with this um so i might do that So that's um, what I have that I can show you that's finished. And then um, I've been working on a few things. Oh, and I, I'll show you. Last time I talked about that I finished these socks and I couldn't find them. Obviously, I found them now. <laughs> that's my um, just vanilla socks in my seal striping Perth colorway. <laughs> and I used the heel and toe from the Sock Architecture book by Lara Neal. Uh, so another thing that you have seen that I have in my wonderful bag by Sandra of Craftfulness um, So this is the oh, Moonraker shawl by, by Melanie Berg and I have worked quite a bit on it, but I um, You can't really see because the rows are quite long now, but it is Quite large so I had all this darker purple part before and I showed you all the different um, ball bands and colors last time but it's a Dale baby wool it's a flock and needle Australian indie designer indie dyer <laughs> sorry this is a mini from Andre Sue knits 
and the green one is a nettle sock yarn and I think it's a Danish brand and then I came to the end of the dark purple and I think I showed you I just started on the flock and needle colorway as my main color and it's continued like that and now I have another section like this left but I'll use the Andresu Knits Mini instead of the purple for the last daisy stitch row and then I think I'll be pretty much out of yarn and look at all these ends I have to weave in I'm not completely happy about that I do normally avoid things that requires a lot of weaving in ends because for me it just means that the project would just sit there knitted and ready to go but not weaving in the ends but I will do it um, so that's one thing that I have worked quite a bit on <clears throat> and I'll say it right now that I have not touched a cardigan that I was going to do for the graveyard uh, knit along for um, yarn 30 with cats kettle but it might still happen. <laughs> um, did I show you? Oh, I have some right here that I was working on just before. I showed you the socks that I started knitting out of this Bendigo Woolen Mills yarn, sock yarn. It's a wool nylon sock yarn. Looks like that. And that's actually my second sock. And the first sock is all done and that's what it looks like I did again the short row heel from the sock architecture book by Lara Neal I used the method for the narrow for my other ones I used the medium size or medium width and this is the narrow heel which reminds me more um, of the fish lips kiss heel when it's a bit shorter here at the back still fits fine um but that's it and i just did a normal wedge toe so that's that one and as you saw i have the second one started and this one is now my project for when i need some plain vanilla knitting and it goes quite quickly. I think it is really the nine inch circular needles. It just makes things go so fast. So that's my on the go project that I have in this bag, my mum made. And then I could not help myself. I started another pair of socks in this really sp spring feeling bag that I made a while ago. And I started, um, making other socks out of this Floromania yarn. So this is the Regia Floromania. And I bought this skein of yarn at the stash cupboard in Hobart. I think it was when I went down for holiday to Bruni Island and I recorded an episode from there and I think it was episode five. So quite a while ago and this was one of my souvenir skeins and I've just kept it you know how you keep things that you really like and um, the happy knitting podcast are having a um, treat yourself knit along so I thought that I would join in that and treat myself and um, start knitting with this so I started making socks again and I have a whole sock. I just have to kitchen at the toe. Again, I've used the short row heel from the sock architecture book and I did the medium one. You can see it's a bit wider. And the reason I use that heel is because it works with keeping the sock on the nine inch circular. So I don't have to transfer like I have been doing before. And also, um, I know that um, afterthought heels work really well with these self-striping yarns and things, but I just don't want to have that, those extra ends to weave in. I know it's ridiculous, but I just prefer to just knit the whole sock in one go. 
And when I did the ribbing, I quite enjoy the ribbing. I did a two by two rib. So I just continued the ribbing all the way down the leg. I did a little bit of um, stockinette before doing the heel. And then just stockinette and um, wedge toe. So that's that. And then I have started on the second one. And that looks like that. I quite like this actually. It has the four different colours. I've started on a stockinette, so I have a bit more stockinette to do, and then I'll do the short row heel. You can see on these socks that they are going to look quite different. If I was going to make the matching and start the second sock at the same spot, it would mean that I would have to rip or take all of this off. Because really here, when the light green starts again, that's where I started here. So all these, I would have to put it in a mini and, and put aside and then start the ball of yarn to knit the second sock. And I just didn't want to do that because the way um, I'm doing it now, just continuing, so basically it's like this. One long repeat. Um, what I can do now, because I have quite a bit left over, I, I always do, um, I can make a small pair of socks for my girls or something like that. And I think my daughter would really like these colours. The problem is, when you make a small sock, the repeats of each colour will be even longer. So I don't know that I actually get all of the repeats on the sock for her size. So I'm not sure what I'll do. I do really like the colours, but it is a little bit tricky with these funky colour color repeats. But yes, they're um, these socks that I'm making. Into my bag again. And then I only have one more thing that I'm working on, and I only started that yesterday. And it's in here in my beautiful bag from made by Ganesh. There was a call out um, by um, a packer Anna. Um, you should follow her on Instagram and you probably have seen some of her sock patterns. Um, if you haven't, you should go and have a look because they're um, amazing. I haven't eaten any myself, but I really like to one day. Um, but uh, she had a call out for test knitters for a shawl, her first shawl pattern design, I think it is. And um, I jumped to that and I said, I'd, I'd love to test it a shawl for you. And we found out it's a two color shawl, so uh, we needed to choose two colors. It's fingering weight shawl, and it's quite large, and it has lace in it. The colors that I chose with these two. This is a Peyton's Dream Time for ply, which is a baby wool. Um, I bought this at a um, huge sale at Spotlight several years ago. Yes, it has the, the mark like that is what they do when they, they're on sale. I bought quite a few things at that sale. It was in Hobart. Um, there was actually a fire in Spotlight in Hobart a few years back. And um, there was no major damage, but they had smoke damage. So they had, um, when they opened up again, they had a sale of all the wool. But I think they also got wool from other spotlight stores around Australia. I'm not sure how it worked, but they did have a lot there that they, they did not stock before they had the sale. Anyway, I picked up some of this because it's really good quality yarn and it's nice and soft. And I got this color thinking that maybe I would over dye it. And I've had this in my stash for, stash for a really long time because I had enough to make something like a featherweight cardigan or something like that, but it just never happened. And I thought it's time because again, test knit, I don't want to go out and buy something new. I did not really have time to dye up something new before I needed to start the test knit. So I got that. 
to do and this one is some of my um, Oz fingering weight so it's Australian 100% Australian merino and it's super wash uh, and I had dyed this a while ago and when I rescanned it I discovered that it was um, in two parts and luckily I had noticed that when I was dyeing it and that's why I thought when I, I thought I better rescan it to make sure it's okay and you know it was not okay so I have two smaller skeins but I really like the color it's um, variegated very pale purpley blue like this one here and then it has a little bit of a turquoisey blue and then just the natural creamy white but I thought they would be nice together so the main body of the shawl will be in this color and for the lacy well there's some lace with this color as well but then for the the border part at the end of the shawl I will use these two and I think that will ooh, look amazing and I started last night and this is how much I have and this is my beautiful progress caper from Gana uh, Yvonne made by Ganache it's a little donut with sprinkles on uh, so yes I have done the start of the shawl and I'm up to where um, I have to do the first lace bit so the first shard of lace and I'm using some high highs. They're always um, enjoyable to knit with. And these are my, um, I use these a lot, these stitch markers. They're from um, Calico Miss, I think it is. I think once I said Miss Calico by mistake, but she's Calico Miss, I believe, on Etsy. And she has some really nice stitch markers. So that's the shawl that I have started on. And uh, I hope um, to finish this so that I can enter it into a Give Me a Crown colour work and knit along and join in there a bit and, and follow the other projects that enter that knit along. It's so great with knit alongs, isn't it? You can. Um, see all these different projects develop and um, yes I just really like it <laughs> so that's um, the only thing I have to talk to you about today I still have um, Halloween colorways I'll leave it there self striping and um, some of the other variegated colorways still have some of those in my Etsy shop if you're interested in some um, Halloween knitting maybe I'm actually going to skein one up for me and I have some more fabric um, that I made the Halloween bags from and I'm going to make myself a Halloween bag and uh, yes skein up some of the Halloween uh, trick-or-treat colorway and I think I'll make myself another pair of socks maybe I'll try to do something different and I can use it as a sample anyway um, that's the plan and now I better move on with my day I think thank you to all of you who have watched today and for contacting me in any way I do not always um, I'm not always very active in the Ravelry group or with comments and things but I do always read everything and I really appreciate it um, if you watching for the first time and you haven't subscribed please do so if you if you like to be notified when there's a new video up and um, yes we're getting up there in numbers of subscribers which is fantastic and I think it will be a while but when we get closer to a thousand subscribers I think we'll, we'll do a giveaway I haven't been doing a giveaway for subscribers or anything like that or followers on Instagram 
Um, but the numbers are slowly getting up there, so we'll do something like that when 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 that happens. It won't be anytime soon. But <laughs> okay, uh, I will let you go. So lucky you get a short episode today. If you're like me, you watch all the short episodes first because they're the ones that I can easily fit into my day. I was down to less than ten podcasts in my watch later queue on YouTube, and now I'm up to thirty five again. I'm back to being one episode behind on everything that I watch, but it's a silly, silly, silly thing to get stressed out about. So I'm not going to get stressed out about that. As I said before I do have a new job and it's taking quite a bit of my time at the moment and I'm just trying to figure out how everything is going to fit together with family and um, work and my hand dyeing and other things that I'm doing so hopefully things will work out and soon we'll have some sort of um, routine and it will all be smooth okay I'll let you go and I won't ramble anymore Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful time until I see you next time. Take care. Bye.